Good morning and welcome on this third Sunday after Epiphany. Uh, today we have a very uh, special guest, which I will leave as a surprise. She introduces herself. So welcome and let us get started, shall we? Our opening sentence today is, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Mark 1, 15. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord is our light and our life. O come, let us worship. Good morning, everyone. I'm Val. I'm Deacon Pam and Glenn's daughter joining you from England this morning to read from the book of Jonah, chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. Jonah goes to Nineveh. Then the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh and deliver the message I have given you. This time Jonah obeyed the Lord's command and went to Nineveh, a city so large that it took three days to see it all. On the day Jonah entered the city, he shouted to the crowds, 40 days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed. The people of Nineveh believed God's message and from the greatest to the least, they declared a fast and put on burlap to show their sorrow. When the king of Nineveh heard what Jonah was saying, he stepped down from his throne and took off his royal robes. He dressed himself in burlap and sat on a heap of ashes. Then the king and his nobles sent this decree throughout the city. No one, not even the animals from your herds and flocks, may eat or drink anything at all. People and animals alike must wear garments of mourning, and everyone must pray earnestly to God. They must turn from their evil ways and stop all their violence. Who can tell? Perhaps even yet God will change his mind and hold back his fierce anger from destroying us. When God saw what they had done and how they had put a stop to their evil ways, he changed his mind and did not carry out the destruction he had threatened. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Today I'm going to read Psalm 62, 6 to 14. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress where I will not be shaken. My victory and honor come from God alone. He is my refuge, a rock where no enemy can reach me. O oh, my people, trust in him at all times. Pour out your heart to him, for God is our refuge. Common people are as worthless as a puff of wind, and the powerful are not what they appear to be. If you weigh them on scales, together they are lighter than a breath of air. Don't make your living by extortion, or put your hope in stealing. And if your wealth increases, don't make it the center of your life. God has spoken plainly, and I have heard it many times. Power, O oh God, belongs to you. Unfailing love, O oh Lord, is yours. Surely you repay all people according to what they have done. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall ever be. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Later on, after John the baptizer was arrested, Jesus went back into the region of Galilee and preached the wonderful gospel of God's kingdom realm. His message was this, at last the fulfillment of the age has come. It is time for the realm of God's kingdom to be experienced in its fullness. Turn your lives back to God and put your trust in the hopeful gospel. As Jesus was walking along the shore of Lake Galilee, he noticed two brothers fishing, Simon and Andrew. He watched them as they were casting their nets into the sea and said to them, come follow me and I will transform you into men who catch people instead of fish. Immediately, they dropped their nets and left everything behind to follow Jesus. Walking a little farther, Jesus found two other brothers sitting in a boat, along with their father, mending their nets. Their names were Jacob 
and John and their father Zebedee. Jesus immediately walked up to them and invited the two brothers to become his followers. At once, they dropped their nets and stood up and left their father in the boat with the hired men and followed Jesus. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Jesus said, come follow me and I will transform you into men who will catch people instead of fish. Immediately they dropped their nets and left everything behind to follow Jesus. The gospel this morning is taken from Mark. This gospel is fast moving. Mark is passionate about telling the story of Jesus. He uses the word immediately 40 times. The word in Greek is euthios, and it helps Mark to capture the excitement of sharing the good news about Jesus. The first verse reads, this is the beginning of the wonderful news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. Then Mark goes on to encourage people, that includes us, to get to know Jesus and to follow his example of how to live. Mark is a short gospel and can be read all at once. Some of us read Luke, a chapter a day in December. So now I challenge you in this time of COVID lockdown to read the gospel of Mark. It's the earliest of the gospels that was written down. Many believe that Mark was a disciple of Simon Peter and received the eyewitness account of Jesus' life and ministry from him. We have met Mark before. He was the John Mark, Barnabas's nephew, who accompanied Paul and Barnabas on a missionary journey. However, something happened and Mark left the journey early. That caused a rift between Paul and Barnabas at the time. But look at the end of the story. God didn't give up on Mark because of his failure. He kept working through him. When St. Paul was near death, he asked Timothy to bring John Mark to him because he had been a tremendous help in his ministry. And this gospel, which Mark has written, has inspired and taught many people about Jesus. Mark's story gives us hope that when we make a mistake or get off the path that God has planned, we're not discarded. God does not give up on us. He loves us. We're called back and given another chance. Simon Peter was also a great example of that. After denying Jesus, he was forgiven and went on to become a great preacher and evangelist. In the gospel this morning, we heard Jesus' initial call to Simon to follow him. Andrew, Simon, James, and John were fishermen doing their work when Jesus called them. They'd heard about Jesus from John the Baptist preaching. They left what they were doing to go and learn more. This is one of those accounts that we have read many times and become used to. So for a moment now, picture yourself with me at the lakeside, watching the men fishing. We're enjoying the air and talking. We've heard about John the baptizer preaching Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. And also about another rabbi who was baptized by John in the Jordan. As we are discussing this, we see the rabbi called Jesus walking along the shore. He stops and talks to two fishermen. And we hear him say, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. Without hesitation, they follow him. And then further along, James and John, who we know as the sons of De Zebedee, follow him too, leaving their father and the other workers in the boat. What is happening? Jesus has such a presence about him, and he looks, as he looks around, we look at each other. Shall we follow too? Shall we go and see where is he is leading and hear 
how he will explain the scriptures? Shall we take this step, changing the path of our lives forever? The fishermen did not think about it. They left immediately. I remember too the shepherds on the hillside who left their ship, sheep when the angel told them about the birth of the Messiah. They went to see what the angel told them about. It was exciting. They were ordinary working men and God spoke to them through the angels and their lives were changed. They became evangelists telling everyone about the birth of the Messiah that they had been waiting for. The fishermen were at their daily work when God spoke to them through his son, Jesus, and they followed. And because they did, their lives were changed and countless thousands of other people heard the good news. They weren't perfect. They were on a journey of learning and transformation. They were forgiven and reinstated when they failed. They learned from Jesus. Our Lord working through imperfect people as he will do for us. I love the colic for today. Almighty God, by grace alone, you call us and accept us to your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. By grace alone, you call us and accept us into your service. That says everything. God has created us and calls us just as we are. Make us worthy of your call. God's love makes us worthy. He's chosen us. We don't choose him. He has given us a free will to choose to follow or not. But as we have seen, when we step away, we'll be welcomed back once we repent like the prodigal son. During this time of lockdown with COVID, when we are encouraged to stay home and stay safe, it's a perfect time to learn more about Jesus, to improve our relationship by getting closer and by spending more time in the scripture and in prayer. Let's pray for all our leaders for wisdom in their decision-making, that justice and health for all people become their priority. Pray for the lonely that they will come to know Jesus and feel his presence with them. Pray for the sick that they will feel comfort and the strengthening, healing power of God. Pick up your Bibles, read the Gospel of Mark, get to know Jesus and study his ministry. Feel his presence with you. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Try saying this personally to Jesus. I will take your yoke upon me, and I will learn from you. For you are gentle and humble at heart, and I will find rest for my soul. Amen. Let us affirm our faith as we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church and the world. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for all of those who are alone. 
for this community, our country, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and those in need, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, and for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For our diocesan bishop, Andrew Asbo, for our area bishop, Rasilla Shaw, and for all bishops and all other ministers, for all who serve God in his church, for our own needs and for those of others. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all those who have died in the peace of Christ and for those whose faith is known to you alone, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you, we pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life. To the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and the absolution. May the almighty and merciful Lord grant unto you pardon and remission of all your sins, time for amendment of life and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our colic today is, Almighty God, by grace alone you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And almighty God, whose loving hand hath given us all that we possess, grant us grace that we may honor thee with our substance and remembering the account which we must one day give may be faithful stewards of thy bounty, bounty through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we want to thank you for your continuing support of the church. The ministries of the church are ongoing, and we look forward to the day we can come and congregate once again together as brothers and sisters under the roof of the house of God. Let us pray over our gifts, which we will offer to our Lord God. Loving Father, before the world began, you called us. Make holy all we offer you this day and strengthen us in that calling. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And our Lord's Prayer. As our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And a prayer for strength. Eternal God, you create us by your power and redeem us by your love. Guide and strengthen us by your spirit, that we may give ourselves today in love and service to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. And the blessing. May the God of peace enable us to do his will in every kind of goodness, 
working in us that which pleases him. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. And let our prayers be set forth before you, Lord God, as incense. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen.